it's bright, it's sunny. I have to move the camera so I'm not looking in the sun. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm about to try using my pot filler for the very first time. I've never used this before. We, Brad and I came up here last night after dinner and we set it up to the height that I need it because it's adjustable depending on what size pots you use. I'm using the trade gallons today. I'm gonna fill as many as, of them as I have to get started on potting up the bare roots. So the way this machine works is that you add the bales of soil into the back, you add the water, and then let it mix for a little bit. And then once it's done mixing, you remove one little piece right here, and then that kind of, it's a conveyor belt, and it moves the soil up and into your pot. I'm very excited to use it. I'm very nervous to use it. Aunt Jan's here, my cousin Michael, and his brother-in-law are here. We're getting started on major projects today. Let's try it out. Now I gotta get the water. Plug it in, plug it in. Plugged in, auto. Right. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna turn it on, um, oops. This was the experiment from last night. I'm gonna dump that in. Okay. And I'm gonna get a tray. And we'll try this out. All right. There's a gas pedal on the floor. So I'm putting it on hand, which means it's only gonna run when I want it to run. So I'm gonna push start. And get my pot lined up. I forgot to make one important adjustment. I'm sitting here thinking, why isn't it working? That's because there is this that you have to lefty loosen. Uh, yeah, perfect. There's actually a catch-all at the bottom because it is pretty common for there to be overflow. And obviously because your pots aren't lined up perfectly and the dirt just falls in. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this overflow which was more than I should have because I don't know what I'm doing yet. I might not use this tray. I was thinking it would be easier but now I'm not so sure. Okay I'm gonna go get more pots and I'm gonna speed things up. <laughs> Thanks. It did take a little bit of trial and error, but I definitely am learning more about using the pot filler. I would recommend wearing a mask, especially when you're adding the bales and water, just the amount of dust that that creates. I was getting the tickle cough, that really annoying one, and it's dangerous. So I learned right away that masks are kind of a necessary thing when you're using this pot filler. In the meantime, we have a lot of construction going on in the other end of the building, so let's head there. You guys might remember this countertop that was making the entrance into greenhouse number one really narrow. Well, for months now, I've been wanting to remove this countertop to make the space, the entryway into number one wider. Because if you were carrying, say, two hanging baskets, you couldn't walk normally. You kind of had to move your body sideways to get through this space. It's not really ideal. I wanted to make it more user friendly. Hey. Look what I found. Bees. <laughs> you can use them in here today. Yes, I can. It's so bright. So I've asked my cousin Michael to remove the countertop and that beam that's in the middle there, it wasn't load bearing, so we could remove that without any issues. Well, when we removed the countertop, we uncovered an extremely uneven floor surface. It appears that the concrete was poured after the fact. There was basically a four inch drop in the middle. And after some discussion, we decided that building a new platform, a new floor was going to be the safest and best option in this space. 
The guys had to run and grab the lumber for the floor. And while they were building it, my mom and Aunt Jan were in greenhouse number one doing their thing. They were staining more things that needed to be stained. Mom is staining more cinder blocks for the tables that have not been built yet. All of the cinder blocks for the existing tables are ready to go. We put a lot of thought into the size and how we should do this, if there should be ramps, if there should be steps, how tall should the steps be, how wide should the steps be, where do the railings go. We figured all of that out and what we ended up deciding, which I'll go into later when I do like a final video, is that we built ramps into greenhouse number one, but for the entrance from the retail space onto the platform is going to be a step, but I have purchased a portable wheelchair ramp for accessibility. Another one of the projects that we started to tackle is the end wall. So the opposite wall from the wood one that we've already done, it was just foam board. We wanted to kind of mimic the opposite side. But what we're doing here is something a little bit more special. I told you guys months ago that the barn is probably coming down. The barn is very old. It's not stable. It's being held together by cables and the insurance company is honestly a little bit concerned about it. So the long-term plan here, as I've mentioned before, is taking down the barn and building a new pole barn. That barn has a lot of history on this property and I wanna maintain that. So we're taking the floorboards from the second level of the barn and we're repurposing them in different areas of the property. One of the spaces we're utilizing these boards is by putting it up as the wall in greenhouse number one. It will also be used as walls in other places. And a friend of mine is making some special shelves for the retail space using this old board. This barn is probably about 100 years old. I love being able to say that the wood on these walls came from the original barn on the property. That being said, the boards have been there for decades and decades and decades. I know this barn has been here for a very long time. So the wood's filthy, covered in layers of dust and a lot of staining on the wood. But for us, it gives it character. You can say that these boards, they have a history. They're telling a story. These next video clips you're gonna see are over the course of a couple of days because we had hundreds of perennials to pot up. My mother-in-law came and helped me and Veda and her boyfriend Asher were there to help me. My son was helping me. It's basically a team effort, guys. We are just doing what we can in the hours that we have. After a day or so of just doing one pot at a time, we realized that two pots fit underneath the space and it's much more efficient and I'm losing a lot less soil over the sides by using two pots, by filling them two at a time. There won't be as much extra soil when we're starting to fill flats and potting, like the actual hanging baskets, because those openings are so much bigger. Um, there just won't be extra soil flying all over the place. So this is definitely a little bit of a learning curve. I've watched a couple of videos of other people using this machine and I'm figuring it out and it's gonna be a huge benefit for us this season. Well, this is part one of the construction here, guys. We'll bring you some more updates on the floor and uh, the green door, um, well guys, it's no more. Details to come. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. The door is gonna be gone. The door is gonna be gone. Yeah. There you go, did it. Keep going. <laughs> oh, okay. New spanking tool? I'm not spanking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That hurt my butt. I just jammed it in. I think I broke my pants. Yeah, okay. Just move them to the top of those. You're in one of my pots. You're growing quite nicely. Stop it! <laughs>